This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by Domain.com. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick, peak.com. Looking to plan your next vacation? Well, a new website launched last week, peak.com, and it could give you some great ideas for your, quote, perfect day. Uh, the site is new, so right now your trips are kind of limited to places in California and Hawaii. Um, not too bad for trips, though, I may add. The design of the site is really clean and well laid out. Um, it actually kind of reminds me of Jet Setter a little bit, um, which could actually be more of a complimentary style site to Peak. You could find deals on hotels on Jet Setter and then activities over on Peak. Um, so let's see, for example, if you're thinking of planning a trip to the Big Island over on Hawaii, you can see that there's different kinds of, um, of activities that you can do here. We have family friendly ones, we have adventurous sites, or perfect days. Now these are cool. It actually lays out a potential itinerary um, built by editors on the website. So they've done all of this stuff here, and they write a really great review about all the different things that you could potentially do. Now, if you find something that you want to do, you can just click on it to learn more about that activity, and you can even book it right here on the website. Um, you can read more about the experience and see exactly where it takes place. So I'm looking forward to this site expanding to many more locations since it's so easy to browse, and the pictures are just so big and beautiful. Check it out today at peak.com and start thinking about your next vacation. Hey, we got this email from Nate who asks, do you have any recommendations on setting up surround sound speakers uh, for gaming on my PC? I actually have what I consider to be a nice pair of headphones, the Audio-Technica ATH 8700s, uh, but I've always preferred speakers. Are there good budget-friendly computer sound systems to buy, or does everyone just buy a home theater system? Mm -hmm. Thanks, uh, love the show, Nate from Cheney, Washington. Cool. Uh, those Audio Technica uh, open air headphones actually look really nice. Yeah. They have a large driver for bass, and as long as you have a separate microphone, they would make a really good PC audio experience. Uh, let's see if there's a bigger picture of these. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Um, however, those are an open, ear design, open air design, and they may not provide total listening privacy if someone's sitting nearby. That's the one downside to having an open air headset design like that. Now, for most PC gamers, we tend to recommend surround sound gaming headsets, but Logitech and Creative uh, and Cyber Audio actually make some pretty good uh, sets of speakers for your PC, although the selection seems to be a lot smaller than it was about 10 years ago. Isn't that funny? I've noticed that as well. It's, I don't know if they're just pushing people more toward home theater gear, because uh, it's essentially the same stuff. Uh, when you're dealing with multiple speakers that are all wired, you end up with a rat's nest of wires. That center channel, the, the speaker that should sit right underneath the screen, uh, will be taking up space on a crowded desktop filled with a monitor, your keyboard, your mouse, and other stuff. And placing the rear speakers. What are you going to do there? Are you just going to set them on the edges of the desk? Are you going to get a separate set of stands to mount them behind you, tack them to the wall? Uh, and then what are you going to do with the wires? So with all of that in mind, and for the price of a surround sound PC speaker setup, you could probably pick up a comparable home theater to box kit, which would be, you know, arguably a little bit better. But if you have your heart set on surround sound speakers, Logitech and Creative both make pretty good sub $100 5.1 surround sound systems. Uh, here is the Z506 from Logitech. Pretty decent system that includes a subwoofer. That's the dot one, by the way, if you ever hear in 5.1 <laughs> and 2.1. The sub and also creative. They have a, a terrific set here as well. If you got to have the full 5 1 independent channels for each part of the audio stream, there you go. I just don't have the desk space for it. I, that's that's I, the main problem for me. That's why I go for the, uh, the, head, the headset. I got rid of my desktop speakers, and the only time I regret it is when people come over. And mm -hmm. then I direct everyone to the home theater PC. So it's like we'll go sit in the living room and listen to it if we've got a group thing going on. Totally. Uh, speaker wise, Prices are good. You can check them out online, and we'll put more info to that in the show notes. Absolutely. Now, Mark out in Florida sent us in this question. I'm about to start a business that will require me to have a powerful PC for editing music videos and other 1080p videos. I will be running Adobe CS6 Master Collection using Premiere Pro and Photoshop to do the heavy lifting. I'm willing to spend the money needed to make it sing and would like your recommendations on what parts to buy to build this beast. Love you all. Loyal fans since the ZDTV days. Mark in Delray Beach, Florida. Woohoo! Cool stuff. Mm -hmm. um, when building an edit machine, uh, there really there are four main parts to consider, uh, components that go into a good PC. Uh, the, the CPU, the, the computer itself, the chip, uh, your RAM, onboard memory, the GPU, the graphics card, and the storage. Uh, first would be the processor. That's, that's usually the huge bottleneck when it comes to rendering or exporting your videos. Now, if you want a, something that's still really powerful but keeps you on budget, take a look at the Intel i7-3770K. 
Uh, occasionally, you'll find it on sale for about 300 bucks, and it is wicked fast for a multi-core renderings box that you're trying to put together. Yeah, definitely. And RAM is also really important, especially if you want to have multiple applications open at the same time. Uh, Todd Copriva, the head of documentation for Premiere and After Effects, says four gigabytes per core is a good amount. Uh, so somewhere between 16 to 32 gigabytes should be plenty. RAM is, is getting pretty cheap anyway at totally. this point. So you might as well go big and have more than you need than undercut yourself and have to worry about that situation later. I totally Totally agree. Mm -hmm. Also, Adobe's programs can take advantage of GPUs to accelerate decoding of media and the rendering effects. So check out a list of supported cards there. But definitely go with a CUDA-enabled NVIDIA card, something like the GTX 570 or newer. I have the GTX 570. It's a pretty rocking card, but it's a couple of years old now. That will make your project really snappy, especially when you're trying to do encoding of intensive video, like H.264 in particular. Mm -hmm. And the last thing to consider is where your media is stored. The faster your drives, the faster your CPU can crunch the numbers. Adobe recommends a four-disc setup, uh, one dedicated to the operating system and software, the second for source media and project files, the third for the media cache, and the fourth for previews and exports. Having something like a RAID 0 setup will speed up uh, media access, but make sure to back up your files because there is no redundancy in, in that kind of situation. Um, we focus mostly on the editing aspect but Photoshop will benefit from all of the components that we mentioned. Check out the show notes for some awesome links from Adobe on how to optimize your system. That's cool. I like that four drive recommendation too. Mm -hmm. They're really trying to minimize trying to read and write to the same drive at the same time. And that's, yeah. that's one way to really improve performance. And now it's time to thank one of our sponsors. When you register a new domain name, make sure it's a .com. A .com is instantly recognizable. It's a name that gives your website credibility no matter what name you actually choose. And the best place to get a new .com domain name is domain.com. Here on the show, we like domain.com because they're affordable, reliable, and easy to use. Plus, Domain.com's active social media presence on Twitter, at Domain.com, and great customer support make it a fun place to do business. We have an awesome coupon code for you, a big 20% discount off Domain.com's already low prices. All you need to do is use the coupon code TECHZILLA when you check out at Domain.com. That's 20% off, folks. Big time savings. Don't forget the TechZilla coupon code when you go to Domain.com. When you think domain names, think Domain.com, and that's a .com.